This is a tutorial on how to make corrugated tin. What you're going to need for materials is some uh, caulking. I would say paintable caulk would be fine even though it's never going to be exposed. You'll need some kind of a putty knife. A wide one, you know a four inch will probably do fine. You're also going to need some sort of heavier cardstock to put this on and you'll need a piece of uh, regular aluminum foil from your kitchen. Let's start by cutting uh, about a six inch square of cardstock and foil. Uh, I'm just going to put the foil on top because it's a little easier to cut the foil when you got the paper under it. So I'm just going to go and, and cut across like that and then let's see, well probably yeah, maybe four inches is fine. There we go and we got a chunk of foil and we got a chunk of cardstock. Now what you want to do is you want to squeeze a little bit of this caulking onto the cardstock. Now I'm going to uh, put on, let's see, about uh, let's put on about about that much. That's probably about fine to use here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, uh, putty knife and I'm going to scrape it to a thin layer. Okay. Now you might ask yourself, well, how thin a layer should this be? Uh, probably about the same thickness as a playing card. Uh, maybe just a little bit thicker than that. So not not real super thick. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the aluminum foil on it. I would put it shiny side down. Let the dull side up because I believe the dull side will take paint better. So what I'm going to do is just going to lay that down uh, and smooth it over top of the of the caulking. Just, just gently smooth it over top like that. Now what I'm going to do is roll some ridges over top of this foil to make the corrugation. What this is is some wire wrapped around a piece of half inch pipe. This is actually a 24 gauge wire. There are like four different wires all stuck together so I didn't have to wrap forever. Uh, this is about the size of speaker wire. So if you have old speaker wire at home, I think that's probably about the right size. Another thing that you could find at your hardware store that works okay is a spring. Try to get a spring like this. Let's see if I can get it closer to the camera so you can see about the size that that is. Something like that where it's not all tight round to, you know, wrapped together, but where you got some space in between each of the loops there. The spring works uh, pretty good to roll over it. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, this for this particular thing that I'm using here, I wrapped it around and super glued one end, wrapped the wire around, and then I ended up super gluing the other end there. So once you've got that laid on top of here, what you're going to do is you're just going to roll over it once. So you're just going to push hard, and you're going to roll over top of that foil like that. Okay. Now you probably noticed that I ended up with a little extra. Uh, a little extra caulking coming out of there. I'm going to have to wash that off of my pipe. I actually didn't mean for that to happen. But it tells me that I didn't spread it quite thin enough. I should have had more of a uh, uh, more of a playing card thickness. Okay, let's see if you can see what that looks like. I'll try to pull it up close to the camera here. And yeah, you see how we got ridges in it like that? Those ridges, I think, are just about the right size for corrugated tin. Now this caulking will dry in about a day, but you don't have to wait for it to dry before you paint it. I'm using the same dark brown color here that I used for the base coat for the sandbag stuff. You're going to notice when you paint on foil that it doesn't cover very good. There's nothing on the foil to soak up the paint. So this is probably, you know, give it one good solid coat, uh, a thin coat. Uh, no matter how thick you put it on, it's still not going to be right. This paint right now is dry, and when I put my second coat on, the paint will actually cover it this time. Now that this has had two coats of paint, I'm going to dry brush, do the dry brushing, and I'm going to use kind of a light brownish gray. Straight gray is a little bit too stark of a gray, so if you tone it down with just a little bit of brown, uh, I think the color works out a little nicer. You have to be extremely careful when you dry brush this though. These little grooves, these little ridges are very, very shallow. There's not a lot there. So the slightest too much amount of paint, you'll just have solid gray and you won't have anything. So I'm definitely, you know, putting the paint on the brush and then wiping off and wiping off till I have absolutely nothing coming through. And then I'm just going to lightly go across an edge just to make sure nothing is coming through. Okay, I think the brush is okay. Even now, I'm starting to get just a little streak or two, but I'm going to try to be careful here. Okay, I've got the camera zoomed up. Now you can see a little bit closer look of the dry brushing on how this is. Get that little light over here. I'm just going across. I'm just going one direction. 
don't go this way because it'll make you want to sort of fill in the cracks. But I'm just going across like this. And you can see if you have just a bare minimum of paint in your brush that those ridges and those ridge lines will, will kind of pick up. There you go. I think that is doing pretty good. Now when you get done, you can just kind of cut out chunks with scissors and uh, then you'll have pieces of corrugated tin to put uh, wherever you want around in your model. I would suggest that whenever you cut horizontally, cut right with the lines and when you cut across, try to cut 90 degrees. That seems to look a little more natural for, you know, chunks of tin. You can also add rust effects by using a little bit of red and I have uh, tips on the website on doing rust effects.